Hundreds of clay tablets and cylinder seals depict human-like beings with wings, linking them with the sky, and always conspicuous, the stars. If you look at the uh, ancient history of the Near East and consider the Sumerians and the Babylonians, you'll find that these peoples believe that their civilization was given to them by beings who came down from the heavens. There's nothing in the historical record that is really conclusive. There are some intriguing stories in the records of Babylon, for example, but the human mind is so easily able to invent myths and fantasies that we have to take these ancient stories with a grain of salt. Yet archaeologists have often pondered on the exact process which led to civilization as we know it. For it was with the suddenness of a sunrise that human ingenuity and engineering skills arose from the Stone Age and burst forth onto the landscape of history. The Sphinx and the Great Pyramid at Giza are two of the greatest enigmas of all time. The exact dates of their construction are still cause for debate. How these ancient people developed the technology to build the Great Pyramid with a discipline and precision still unmatched today is unknown. The Great Pyramid in Egypt stands more than 450 feet tall. It weighs more than 6 million tons, and it has a footprint in excess of 13 acres. It's perfectly aligned to true north, south, east, and west. To achieve that precision of alignment with a monument on this scale is an extraordinary technological feat and one that is continuously overlooked by our scholars today. Suddenly, out of nowhere, this extraordinary monument, a high-tech achievement by any standards, just appears on, on the desert. This is a great mystery, totally unexplained by conventional history, and one that requires us to use our minds and our imagination and intelligence to try to work out what on earth is going on here and what it says about the origins of human civilization, of the origins of our society and our view of the past and where we came from. My sense is that uh, we're missing a huge part of the human story. I, I think it's possible and indeed probable that we are a species with amnesia, that we've lost the record of our story going back thousands of years before so-called history began. And I think if we could go back into that dark epoch, we would discover many astounding things about ourselves. Egypt and the Near East are not the only regions where ancient ruins taught the mind with the riddle of how they came into being. There are many such places. This is one of them, the great ceremonial center known as Tiahuanaco in Bolivia. Not as old or as imposing as the pyramids of Egypt, what makes this site so unusual is its unique location. The biggest blocks at Giza weigh 200 tons. The biggest blocks at Tiwanaku weigh 400 tons. 400 ton blocks of stone used to create enormous constructions, 12 and a half thousand feet above sea level, in an area where it's almost not possible to grow any food today. The altitude is so high that the crops come out of the ground stunted. And yet again, we're asked to believe that this was done with massive labor forces hauling on ropes, pulling these blocks along. It defies belief to imagine that this was how it was done. They, they, you could not support ever a large labor force at that altitude. Whether we like it or not, we're looking at the evidence of a technology and one that we don't understand. Like the Giza site, the site of Tiwanaku also incorporates extremely precise astronomical alignments. Perhaps the most perplexing site of all in South America are the Nazca Lines in Peru. Covering more than 200 square miles, 
A bewildering pattern of gigantic artwork litters the Nazca Plateau. In addition to figures of birds, spiders, and animals, arrow straight lines stretch out to every point of the compass. Believed to have been laid down here more than 2,000 years ago, they are observable only from a great height. Is this a canvas of signs and symbols etched in the sand to honor pagan gods? Or, as some people believe, do they contain hidden messages aimed at ancient travelers from the stars? saga of a Sumerian hero named Gilgamesh. It's one of the great epics in the history of world literature. One of the earliest pieces of literature that we have also coming out of Mesopotamia, out of Iran. Written approximately 2000 BC, the legend tells the story of the hero Gilgamesh, who seeks the secret of eternal life. He is told that the Garden of Paradise once existed, but it was destroyed by a great flood. Gilgamesh eventually finds the fruit of the Tree of Life. Unfortunately, he is cheated out of immortality by a familiar adversary. In the Gilgamesh epic, it is the serpent that does us in, in the same way that in the Garden of Eden, the serpent does us in again by tempting us and by leading us into disobedience to God and thus taking away immortality and life once again. But George Smith had discovered something truly shocking. The Epic of Gilgamesh is at least a thousand years older than the Hebrew Bible. Biblical scholars began to wonder, was the book of Genesis and the Garden of Eden story a descendant of an earlier mythology? The Bible did not come out of the vacuum. There are all kinds of fingerprints in the Bible that can be traced back to Mesopotamia, to ancient Egypt, to perhaps even farther flung uh, uh, regions of the ancient world. And they all are preserved like a fly in amber in our texts that we call the Holy Writ. With the discovery of materials from ancient Mesopotamia, led scholars to wonder if uh, the Garden of Eden was not thought of uh, at it, in its earliest form as being locatable uh, somewhere within classical Mesopotamia. Since the date of its first publication, von Daniken's book has seen more than 40 printings and can be read in more than 30 languages. But Chariots of the Gods was a bestseller that might never have been published. I have all literature, hundreds of indications which you cannot deny anymore. What it means is that we need new explanations for human origins, that perhaps we're not alone in the universe, and that human-like beings came to this planet from some other planet elsewhere in the cosmos. I think that's a very good idea myself. And it really excited people. It was a new way of looking at the past, looking at ancient civilizations, and it put this very modern space-age spin to the whole thing. Chariots of the Gods caused a sensation, fueled in no small part by the popular response to books like Frank Herbert's Dune, television shows like Star Trek, and feature films like 2001, A Space Odyssey. The time was right, because everybody was talking of possible space travel, of possibility of extraterrestrials, so it was all wonderful coming together, but it was not planned. How, for example, could a centuries-old map chart a landmass that has only recently been discovered? It would tend to indicate that the map was made at a time when Antarctica was ice-free which would be many millions of years ago. And how could a primitive civilization know how to harness electricity 
or even build a computer. This was tantamount to finding a jet airplane in the tomb of King Tut. And just who were these mysterious designs, only visible from high altitudes, intended for? The signs are made for somebody who flies. There's no way out of this. Could Von Daniken's theory that ancient gods were really alien visitors contain any serious scientific merit? The answer involves a search around the world, and even right before our eyes.